and then the process repeats, repeats, repeats. Just as each year in the temperate climates, we get spring, summer, fall, winter, and then again spring, summer, fall, winter. Yeah. So we have to, we have to, you know, we we can't stop the seasonal changes, but we can prepare ourselves. We can adjust just because winter is coming. You know, it doesn't mean you have to freeze to death. You can prepare yourself yep. for it. Yep. So, so those are the three different senses in which I use the word, you know, devolution, devolution in the sense that we've devolved or come down from some higher level of the cosmos. Uh, we, we, We've uh, uh, been put into this material level of reality where we have to function through the material vehicles that we call bodies. But ultimately, we're, we're from an, an entirely different level of reality. And this is, I mean, this, these sorts of ideas have been you know, popularized you know, a few years ago through films like the Matrix series. Yeah. Or recently, by the you know the Avatar film, where you have somebody his consciousness is being projected into a body that exists on another planet, and he functions on that planet through that body. So basically, according to what I'm presenting in Human Devolution, is that we're all pretty much in that situation. Uh, all of us, mm. for for all of us, our consciousness has been projected down onto this planet into a material body in which we have to function on this level of reality. But ultimately, we have, as conscious beings, an existence on some higher level of reality. In, in, uh, in Avatar, uh, M- Michael, we see this being used as a, uh, in a form of a technology. They're using uh, uh, a very advanced high technology to place this person in, into the body of someone else. Uh, do, do you think that that is actually what is happening with the, in terms of our experience as well? Is is this a literal computer game, if you want to look at it from that point of view, or do you think that this is a spiritual mechanism at play here? It's it's a it's it's a still form of a technology, but it's more organic. It's a spiritual technology, if you will. Yes, it's it's uh, I would call it a spiritual technology, but there's a material element to it in this sense. Say as as human beings were normally meant to live on the land, if we want to live in the water, then we need special vehicles that will allow us to function in the alien element of water. We need a diving suit or a submarine. Now, where do those you know, diving suits and submarines come from? Well, they come from engineers who understand that if human beings are going to exist under the water, they need special vehicles that will allow them to do that. So they design and build these vehicles uh, that we then can use to function Mm. in, in the water. So I would say, similarly, there are higher intelligences in the cosmos that understand that if human beings, which are ultimately beings of pure consciousness, are going to function in the world of matter. They need vehicles that will allow them to do that. So they design and build them. Now, what makes these machines different than a submarine or a diving suit is that once these machines are produced, they can go on to reproduce other machines, you know, by different sexual and asexual processes. Mm. So they're they're very complex machines. And there is a, a I would say a, a spiritual element into it because you know, say if we want to get into a submarine, well we go down to the dock, we get in the submarine, but how does the conscious self get into that, uh, the, the this sub body, or the body, that, that's, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's not something that we do ourselves. That's something. That's where the spiritual element comes into it. How mm-hmm. you know a conscious self is projected down into this uh, level of reality. I mean, there is a material element to it. We can see that our bodies 
our vehicles are made of material elements, calcium, phosphorus, all these elements that are there, uh, but uh, the consciousness is not made of any of those elements. Of course, this is where a big debate is going to come in. Mm. Uh, some, some people in this world today, especially many scientists, think that, well, uh, if you organize matter in a sufficiently complex way in the brain, it produces consciousness. You know, but only in connection with the brain, only in connection with matter. Mm. And when you disorganize the matter, then there's no more consciousness, none of that. Mm. Uh, so under, under that picture of reality, it's matter that is primary. And what we call consciousness is only a temporary byproduct of extremely complex organizations of matter. And only, it only occurs when those extremely complex organizations of matter are there. Otherwise, there's no consciousness. And in any particular case, uh, say, you know, if I'm existing as a conscious being now at the time of death when the chemicals in my brain disorganize, then there's no more consciousness. So under that picture of reality, it's matter that is primary and the domination and control and exploitation of matter is the main purpose of human life mm. so that people in our modern human civilization are organized for that. We're producing and consuming more and more material things, not for the benefit of all because, uh, uh, you know, according to the current scientific theories, we're not only just machines made of matter, we're machines made of matter in competition with each other for survival. So therefore, uh, under the influence of these ideas, we see in our human civilization today very intense levels of competition uh, among individuals, among races, among classes, among nations even among religions. Mm. You know, there are these very intense levels of competition for control and domination and, and exploitation of the resources of matter. And this results uh, in the environmental destruction that we see going on. For example, our human civilization the way that it's organized now requires huge amounts of oil. Mm. So, you know, the nations and the big corporations, big global corporations, are trying to extract as much oil as they can from the earth. And it's so important that they do that that they're prepared to risk environmental destruction uh, in the search for ever increasing supplies of oil. And Therefore, you get catastrophes like we see happening in the Gulf of Mexico mm. now. And it will happen in other places as well. But uh, the point is, is that this intense focus that we see on material production and consumption is what underlies all of these environmental catastrophes that the world is suffering and will continue to suffer. Huh. And it also underlies the intense levels of conflict that we see on all levels of human civilization because we're taught uh, we're taught in our official education systems we are just machines made of matter that's what we really are and not only that we're machines made of matter in competition with each other for survival this is the Darwinian theory of evolution which is taught. Mm -hmm in all the official education systems all over the world. And it's not just a scientific theory. It's, it's, it's a theory that's meant to keep people focused on material production and consumption. And that generates a lot of wealth that flows into the pockets of uh, different people. Uh, it flows into you know, the pockets of, say, scientists who are inventing weapons of mass destruction, consumer products, 
all kinds of pharmaceuticals and things like that. It, the money flows into the pockets of the corporations that build the weapons, manufacture the pharmaceuticals and consumer products. Uh, it flows into the pockets of the governments that are taxing all this economic